God's Plan of Salvation. Published by Bible.org. 1 John chapter 5 verses 11 to 12 And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. The one who has the Son has this eternal life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have this eternal life. This passage tells us that God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son, Jesus Christ. In other words, the way to possess eternal life is to possess God's Son. The question is, how can a person have the Son of God? Man's Problem Separation from God Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 But your sinful acts have alienated you from your God. Your sins have caused Him to reject you and not listen to your prayers. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 But God demonstrates His own love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. According to Romans chapter 5 verse 8, God demonstrated His love for us through the death of His Son. Why did Christ have to die for us? Because Scripture declares all men to be sinful. To sin means to miss the mark. The Bible declares, all have sinned and fall short of the glory, the perfect holiness, of God. Rom. 3.23 in other words, our sin separates us from God who is perfect holiness, righteousness and justice, and God must therefore judge sinful man. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 You are too just to tolerate evil. You are unable to condone wrongdoing. The futility of our works. Scripture also teaches that no amount of human goodness, human works, human morality, or religious activity can gain acceptance with God or get anyone into heaven. The moral man, the religious man, and the immoral and non-religious are all in the same boat. They all fall short of God's perfect righteousness. After discussing the immoral man, the moral man, and the religious man in Romans chapter 1 verse 18 minus 3 to 8, the Apostle Paul declares that both Jews and Greeks are under sin, that, there is no one righteous, not even one, Rom. 3 to 9 10. Added to this are the declarations of the following verses of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 For by grace you are saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. 9 It is not of works, so that no one can boast. Titus chapter 3 verses 5 to 7 He saved us, not by works of righteousness that we have done but on the basis of His mercy, through the washing of the new birth and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, 6 Whom He poured out on us in full measure through Jesus Christ our Savior. 7 And so, since we have been justified by His grace, we become heirs with the confident expectation of eternal life. Romans chapter 4 verses 1 to 5 What then shall we say that Abraham, our ancestor according to the flesh, has discovered regarding this matter? 2 For if Abraham was declared righteous by the works of the law, he has something to boast about, but not before God. 3 For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. For now to the one who works, his pay is not credited due to grace but due to obligation. 5. But to the one who does not work, but believes in the one who declares the ungodly righteous, his faith is credited as righteousness. No amount of human goodness is as good as God. God is perfect righteousness. Because of this, Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 tells us God cannot have fellowship with anyone who does not have perfect righteousness. In order to be accepted by God, we must be as good as God is. Before God, we all stand naked, helpless, and hopeless in ourselves. No amount of good living will get us to heaven or give us eternal life. What then is the solution? God's solution. God is not only perfect holiness, whose holy character we can never attain to on our own or by our works of righteousness, but He is also perfect love and full of grace and mercy. Because of His love and grace, He has not left us without hope and a solution. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 But God demonstrates His own love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the good news of the Bible, the message of the Gospel. It's the message of the gift of God's own Son who became man, the God-man, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sin, and was raised from the grave proving both the fact He is God's Son and the value of His death for us as our substitute. Romans chapter 1 verse 4 Who was appointed the Son of God in power according to the Holy Spirit by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 He was given over because of our transgressions and was raised for the sake of our justification. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 God made the one who knew no sin to be sin for us, 
so that in him we would become the right eousness of God. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 Because Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, to bring you to God, by being put to death in the flesh but by being made alive in the Spirit. How do we receive God's Son? Because of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us on the cross, the Bible states, He that has the Son has life. We can receive the Son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior by personal faith, by trusting in the person of Christ and His death for our sins. John chapter 1 verse 12 But to all who have received Him, those who believe in His name, He has given the right to become God's children. John chapter 3 verses 16 to 18 For this is the way God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son that everyone who believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. 17 For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through Him. 18 The one who believes in Him is not condemned. The one who does not believe has been condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This means we must each come to God the same way. 1. As a sinner who recognizes his sinfulness, 2. Realizes no human works can result in salvation, and 3 relies totally on Christ alone by faith alone for our salvation. Paul writes in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 11, 13. Verse 10 to 9 reads because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 10 for with the heart one believes and thus has righteousness and with the mouth one confesses and thus has salvation. 11 for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. 13 For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you would like to receive and trust Christ as your personal Savior, and and cross the gap from being outside the fellowship with God to being with the Holy God in fellowship, you may want to do what Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can express your faith in Christ by a simple prayer. Something like, God I know I am a sinner and I want to cross the gap and be in fellowship with you. I am now doing what you said to do. I know that Jesus is my Lord and I believe you raised him from the dead and now according to your scriptures I have salvation and will live forever with you. If you prayed that prayer we would like you to email us at knowinggodemail and then join us at our knowinggod.org website. Note. We would like to have this article, 